Hello, YouTubing creatures. I don't know. It's Sanction here, and today we're going to talk about how to get a consistent, even sub sound throughout your bass line, even if it's quite complicated. And to demonstrate that, we're going to talk about an old track of mine called Too Bad to Drop. And if you're not familiar with the track, here is how the drop sounds. So as you can hear, it's quite a complicated bit of nonsense going on. And there's 11 different sounds in there to make up that bass line. And we're not going to talk today about how to make a bass line like that. What we're going to talk about is getting your sub to be consistent throughout the whole bass line. And the reason I chose this track is because it's made up, all the different sounds are just little bits of sample. Like, that's a really badly looped little saw wave sound. If we listen to this one. You can even hear my terrible edit at the end, where I haven't faded the end of the sample. Um, but yeah, those 11 different sounds got to make up this bass line. And we could have just left the sub rolling on every one of those sounds and hope for the best. Um, but it might not be very consistent, like the, the sub coming off this saw bass might have been more chunky than, say, the sub coming off that sound. Um, you know, some subs may be louder than others, and you would get a real inconsistency in what your sub is doing throughout the whole bass line. So this is what I do in almost every track that I make, is once I've made my bass line, I will go in and EQ all of these sounds. So this saw bass, if we look at the EQ on that, I've taken out a big chunk of sub there. Quite why I didn't do a, a low cut there, I'm not sure. It's probably a reason at the time, but you would do a low cut on that to get rid of the sub information. But I'm also sending all these to this group mid-range here. And I'm doing a low cut on there just to double down on making sure there's no sub information going there. So now when we play just those sounds together, this is what they sound like. So we've got a nice complicated bass line there, but no sub information whatsoever. So what I do then is re um, replace the sub information that we've taken out with a sub bass sound. And the one I use, I've showed you this in videos before, but it's coming out of Trillion, it's the Juno 106 multi sample. And the reason I use that is for this reason. If we look at this serum patch here, which is just um, a sine wave playing two octaves down, if we play it at G, which is the key of this song, and look at the BU meter here, or the spectral analyzer, or whatever, whatever you want to call it. And we can see that it's hitting nicely at around 50 hertz, which is where we kind of want it at G. But then it kind of, it just tails off, right? And that sounds good enough. You could totally use that and not be a problem. But if we look at the analyzer on this sound, it's doing the same thing. It's got this lump at around 50, which is where we want, but look at all these cool harmonics here. And what that does is it helps it cut through on systems that don't have great bass response. So if someone's listening on a laptop or on their phone or on an iPad or on terrible headphones, they won't feel that sub, obviously, but they'll be able to hear it in the mix. So back to the uh, matter in hand. So we've got a bass line and we've taken out all the sub. So now what we need to do is put that sub back in. So we've found our sound that we're going to use. And it's literally just a case of getting in there and following with MIDI what your bass line is doing. So it's a little bit more work than just sitting there and having all the sub sounds, all the sub information on each of these sounds on there and hoping for the best, but it gives you a better um, better outcome at the end of it. So we just listen to just what that sub's doing. You should hear that it's following the notes and the rhythm of that fairly complex lot of bass sounds. So here we go, that sounds like this. And what you can do, if it helps you at the time when you're doing that, if you could, if you start up just um, a default serum patch, it's literally just um, a saw wave, you could actually just be playing that on a saw wave that you can hear easier and play along. 
But yeah, but once you've done that, you've then replaced all the sub information with a consistent sub all the way through. So when you play them both together now, that's just a nice simple way of making it just totally consistent throughout your whole track. Nice and even, no weird bits of sub that are louder than others, no bits of sub that have a slightly different tone than others. Just a nice, consistent, lovely, rumbling sub bass. So there you go. If you like that video, you know, like it and subscribe and do all that YouTube nonsense. If you've got any questions, um, drop me a comment below or find me on Facebook. And until next time, I'll see you.